And towards insulting the graces upon people, we do it happily. Pastor Justin Suleiman has been in scandalous news. No, this is not the first time. It's an insider issue. We are incurring all kinds of causes upon ourselves. We're just telling you, be careful. This is not in the Bible. No pastor curses. I, for one, have never feared curses in my life. I, I, curse today was born. From dead that the freeze, the die here to have a little again. Glory to God. I'm concerned about what's going on in Nigeria. as subjective as possible see um i have a reason to believe that um the likes of respected men of god we have in nigeria let's say from the apex pastor Ia Adeboye, and like we have down to his spiritual son we have discussed a whole lot right here on the platform with regards to issues i have arisen about him and would i say you know the scandals and all that and also we are going to be mentioning the person of um Tunde Bakari as well in connection to one famous or well-known American preacher Crypto Dollar who has recently repented of his ideology or what he believed about fighting. Now if you had followed me over over the years of course you know that I've always talked about this concept of fear and guilt being a tool that is used to control people and keep some people in religious bondage instead of being in that active loving relationship with our lord jesus christ as we grow day in day out in fellowship with him now first of all i'm going to play for you a video right here by pastor Ia Adeboye using that particular concept of fear and guilt that makes them committed to the act he wants them to do which has to do with tithing listen to him for a moment because if you attract a curse, particularly from God to yourself, you can forget your generation. That's why when we talk about pay your tithe, it's not a minor thing. You read it, Malachi chapter 3, read it from verse 8 to 11. I've said it before, I've said it again and again. If your physical father causes you, go to your spiritual father, he can cancel the curse. If your pastor, your spiritual father causes you, run to the general overseer, he can cancel the curse. If the general overseer causes you, fast for 40 days and nights, and beg his father in heaven God can cancel the curse if God causes you where will you go? now so don't joke don't do anything that will attract God's cause on you you must avoid divine cause like a plague It's not a question of, oh, the, the church wants to take my money. No, 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 no. Don't listen to those who are saying that to you. Don't listen. Uh, somebody showed me something on the internet about one fellow who said he was talking about tithe, that you shouldn't pay tithe. I, I, at first, I didn't want to listen, but God said, wait now, listen to what he has to say. And the fellow continued to talk. And he said, you see, tithe is supposed to be used to buy alcohol so they can drink in church. I said, oh, well, now we know who is talking. Even mad people don't go to church to drink alcohol. No, 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 no matter how crazy somebody is, the moment you say, this is a church, ask him to come in and drink, he will say, I I'm not that crazy. Now, what you just heard there is coming from the general overseer. You see the way he actually dichotomized the hierarchy and using the concept of curses? Now, if you have not watched this video right now that I'm putting on your screen, a couple of videos here, I've, I, I have made videos about this particular concept. This one and also this one. 
talking to you about the idea of why the only way these people themselves can actually get their way is to bring you the concept of curses and the concept of fear and just making you feel that if you don't do this this is what's going to happen to you all right now of course people will now do the obvious comparisons okay what of people that don't do it but of course they are actually you know doing well in life we can make many examples as i would expect you to give me in the comments but if you don't understand this particular concept you would not know why it is you are doing what you are doing whether you are doing what you are doing maybe tithing or whatever out of fear or out of love you see the opposite of your faith is fear you understand so most times like the bible itself says you know, i've not been given the spirit of fear but of power of love and a sound mind what the pastors aim in order to get you to do their bidding is for them to instill in you that fear that you have not been given so over time instead of you thinking yeah, that you are getting better the only way they can actually get to do their get you to do their bidding is if they can bring this concept of curses to you like you see him rightly explaining according to his own concept when it comes to the hierarchy of curses so that means your pastor has more authority than your biological father interesting the bloodline that means even your pastor himself if he gets to curse you because when i tell you people that your pastors when i read some of your comments and you people are cursing me in the comments you learned it from your pastors you think i am lying you think i'm joking now you heard the general overseer himself saying that if your pastors curse you your pastors actively curse you so you sit down there in church and your pastors lay curses on you and what makes what happens to you as a person you leave the church becoming 10 times a candidate of hell than your own man of god if I'm to put it that way. Why? Strenuously and shown the truth and where to find the truth. The scriptures of God. He gave specifics. Titan, he taught one after. Keep going. We didn't get there. I got there and I stopped. I stopped. Heavy burdens. And then he started calling them hypocrites. He pointed out how they make things hard for God's people. So the Lord gave us illustrations. Keep going, keep going. He talked about their stopping people from entering the kingdom of heaven. You look for a convert from, you travel heaven and earth, sea and earth to find convert. And then he said, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. Who, have, have you read Matthew 23? You better go and read it. And read Matthew 15 in the process. Too. Read your Bible. That's what I'm trying to talk about. Because now moving to the person of Tunde Bakari and looking at Crefo dollar. This is a, what Tunde Bakari had to say about the same Crefo dollar. We are going to be playing his video right now about the concept of tithing and what he now has to say. Listen to what Tunde Bakari had to say about him. Frontiers of his kingdom. As long as we are bringing but truth. But the truth is one. One truth, one Lord, and one gospel. Uh -huh. But when you do nothing against the truth, but, but for, for the, the truth. truth. But when you begin to twist it to make it look funny, and some of us will speak out. And he's a true friend that speaks true to his friend. Flatterers will die before their time. But you guys, you guys have to sit down and debate this thing. Because that's part of the whole idea of, uh, of um, contending for the faith. Well, I'll give you another example. Uh, Crevo Dora. Yes. In uh, Georgia. Yes. He was in a ministry and he invited me over to East. Mm -hmm. And he wanted four of us to hit America big time with the word of faith. Um, uh, who are the four? Himself and myself will be the uh, blessed man because I'm not black, I'm blessed. <laughs> and, and John Avanzini and Mark, Marcus Bishop yes. will be the white. And we'll, four men will carry the egg. We are very good friends. I remember ministering one day and, and, and Crevlo had, had given me my honorarium of 5,000. And the following days, the Lord said to him, everything they got, Yesterday was given to me and it was $55,000. You want to keep such friends, won't you? Yes. But then he invited me over and while he was introducing me, he said, oh, this is my friend. He built a house for his mother from foundation to the roof without, without taking any loan. And these are the people that are, I, that are, I mean, that are my friends and they will teach us the gospel. Then he introduced, he said, 
My name is Dollar. It's not an accident. I'm a money magnet. Money follows me everywhere. And he introduced me to preach. My wife was there. I took up my agbada and I said, be careful what you call prosperity. Because Joseph was a slave in the house of Potiphar. He had no dime. Joseph was thrown into prison. He had no bank account. But the Bible says the Lord was in Joseph and was a prosperous man. Let us be careful of we'll prosperity with without first. Yes. Prosperity. Let us be careful of prosperity without purpose. The presence of God in the life of a believer, if you if he embraces that presence and is taught well, it will eventually prosper. Well, that will lead to a pattern of ways for a while. But he came back to Nigeria for my 49th birthday and brought a verse. He said, I want to thank you for preaching out of conviction. When you speak truth, eventually when truth begins to move, there will be no traces of falsehood when the arrow of truth shoots. So when we disagree over something, it doesn't mean we are enemies. <laughs> I remember Bishop Oedipo telling me, you told my book in the open. I said, Bishop, you are smarter than that. I didn't tear your book. You wrote it, I bought it. I tore my book because it was full of errors. Because of what he says that the live, the, the, the anointing oil yes. uh, is not a symbol of the Holy Spirit, it's the life of God inside the bottle. I mean, you derail so many people. If it's told to a few people, it's okay. But you publish it, I bought it, my members are reading it, and I will sit down. No, no, no. If anointing oil is the Holy Spirit, then Jesus is a lamp walking on four legs. Yes. And this is something that happened in the past. And later, of course, they got to reconcile and all that and their friends and all. Nigerian pastors, I don't think, would ever repent or would I say change their ideology of this whole concept of tithing and how they have to make it to raise altars and all that. Later, we are going to be looking at these things in more detail. So, I might be making reference to previous videos I made in the past because I don't like repeating myself a whole lot. But if you have followed me over time, you know that these things are things that I have said before. Today, we have Benny Hen coming out to say, you know, he's repenting about a couple of things and all that. Come on, the videos are here on social media. Oh, come on, are you not seeing them? These are people that, if you ask a typical young Nigerian youth growing in the Lord and being all on fire for the whole, all of that, they can mention these names for you. Now, these names themselves right now are beginning to strip themselves up of these things that they themselves have been doing not as if he wasn't aware all this while look at what Chris Crifodola had to say I uh, I want to start off by saying to you that I'm still growing and that the teachings that I've shared in times past on the subject of tithing were not correct and today I stand in, in humility to correct some things that I've taught for years and believed for years, but could never under, understand it clearly because I had not yet been confronted with the gospel of grace, which has made the difference. I won't apologize because if it wasn't for me going down that route, I would have never ended up where I am right now. But I will say that I have no shame at all at saying to you, throw away every book, every tape, and every video I ever did on the subject of tithing, unless it lines up with this. I've, I've done some corrective teaching in the, in, the, in the last 10 years, but not to the degree of what we're getting ready to do now. So why is this important? Because religion is sustained by two factors, fear and guilt. And if it's one subject that the church has used for a long time to keep people in fear and guilt, it is in that subject of tithing. And it has to be corrected and it's gotta be corrected now giving above all giving should be given with pure motives it should be given with an attitude of worship to god and it should be given as a service to the body of christ so according to second corinthians 9 7 second corinthians 9 and 7 look what he says here he says you must each decide in your in your own heart 
how much to give. New Testament, you must decide in your own heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or don't give in response to pressure. Well, the, the tithing teaching always pressured me. It gave me fear. Malachi 3 and 10 says, what's that? You are cursed with a curse. I remember one time I, my tithe was like, uh, I don't know what it was, a uh, hundred and some dollars and 26 cents. And I didn't have the 26 cents. And somebody put a brick through my window, the, uh, my car window of a new car I had. And uh, Taff and I just got married, and, and, and as soon as I did that, the condemnation of tithing and not tithing came up, and, I, and, and, and I'm like, you know, the devil just spoke to me and said, see there, if you tithe, then this wouldn't happen. The only reason it happened is God. it was fear-based. He says, you're never to give in response to pressure. See, the reason why you ain't getting a job is because you ain't tithing. You should never give. That's pressure. You should never give in response to pressure. I tell you what, and now one of y'all gonna get blessed until you start tithing. You should never give responding to pressure. He just told you how to give. You decide going to God, seeking wisdom, decide in your heart what you should give for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And certainly when God puts something in your heart and wisdom comes in your heart, what the actions are going to be cheerful in their, in their giving. Luke 18 and 11, and the Pharisee stood by himself and he prayed this prayer. I thank you, God, that I am not like other people. All right, you're going to see the Pharisee is self-righteous. I'm not a cheater, a sinner, an adulterer, and I'm certainly not like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give you a tenth of my income. You, met, you ever met people in church today that, that they tell you, I'm a tither? And what does that mean? That means you're still under the law, huh? I give you a tenth of my income, Lord. Come on. But the tax collector stood at the distance and dared not even lift his eyes to heaven as he prayed. Instead, he beat his chest in sorrow, saying, Oh God, be merciful to me, for I am a sinner. And verse 14 tells you, I tell you, this sinner, not the Pharisee, returned home justified before God. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Do you see Jesus teaching on tithing here? He was rebuking this guy for his self-righteousness. Self-righteous people are people who strive to get right with God. And religion and self-righteousness are the same thing. Religion is the same as self-righteousness. It's, it's man's pursuit to make himself right before God. Religion and self-righteousness operates through guilt and fear. Guilt and fear. So when you're religious, there's some guilt and some fear. Dependency on guilt is what keeps religion alive and well. And like a drug dealer giving an addict a small dose of, of the drug to keep him coming back. So, what, so what's happening in the church is we used to give you a small dose of fear and guilt. You have to be ashamed of yourself for not tithing. That's why none of you. And the thing that bothered me about it is that I never met too many churches that had even 10% of the people in their church tithing. It was like the rest of your church knew something was wrong with this and you kept pushing it and you were pushing hard for only about seven or six people, six, six people, six or seven percent of the people tithing anyway because they figured, I don't understand. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. And it turns out they was right. Whew. Is that the same crap? Oh, dog, what happened? I'm growing, honey. I'm growing. I'm growing. Now he's telling you right now to throw away the books that he has bought and he has profited from and all the lies he has taught over the years and all that. Is he just going to go away like that? Of course, I would say he's done a good thing for him to even while he's living, correcting the errors he had made. Now listen to Suleiman himself talk about the same concept of tithing years ago. This morning as... We we'll go straight and proper into the service. Let's receive our tithes this morning. Those who don't pay tithes, every other person, please take your seat. You may be seated. Those who don't pay tithes, 
things are tied for them hallelujah thank you almighty god we bless you lift it above your head and let's pray father we ask in the name of jesus receive our lives and receive our tithes we decree that the devourer is rebuked perpetually by disobedience and let prosperity speak in our tabernacles in jesus fireful name you understand so these people themselves you see someone say tight or things will be tight for you if you are suffering check your offering they come up with these rhymes if the general overseer himself last time we were talking about pastor Ia Deboye saying that if you don't tight you will not go to heaven there are many other concepts that make people themselves tight but yet still you are lacking the basic understanding of that particular concept so we have an African church that is very, very manipulative by their pastors, by the leaders, in order to get money out of your pocket. Now, I am not against people themselves supporting the work of God in their church or in their local church because whether you like it or not, when it comes to the instruments, you know, light and a couple of things, they have to be paid for. One person can decide to handle that, but if you see that there is no other way for you to get these people themselves to give and all you now resort to is manipulating them later i'm, I'm working and really looking at um this particular pastor in the uk um, pt himself who had been recently reported or would i say um reported by the uk authorities with regards to his church being closed down and a couple of things that has been going on around him i'm still keeping that on the side but i'm asking you my dear wonderful viewer my dear fellow christians if you are a christian because some of you have totally lost your brains in the process what krifodullah has said right now and what you have seen or what you see in the nigerian church or maybe when you go to church on sunday and what your pastors tell you as to why you should tight and all that i'm asking you a question are you doing what you are doing out of faith or out of fear when you even come to that particular concept of tithing do you have the right understanding of it okay right now cliff Duda himself has repented and all that if you are watching me on youtube i'm going to leave the full link to the video itself because i don't want to make my videos too long Go and watch it and listen to what he has to say about the new truth and revelation that he has gotten about that particular concept because many are still going to repent. The African people, I'm, see, I don't think it's going to be an easy road for that to happen because if you can hear this from the apex himself, the most respected, what do you have to say about the Oyedepos and the Suleimans and the rest of them like we know? Now, what do you have to say? Elijah, Elijah, stand on fire, bless my